uh, heartbreaking and confusing day uh, here in Israel. Joining me now is IDF retired Colonel Miri Eisen, currently the director of the International Institute for Counterterrorism at Reichman University. Thank you so much, Miri, for being with me. Give me your reaction to uh, the press conference last night, where uh, the Israeli leadership, including the prime minister, used repeatedly the word deal, uh, indicating certainly to the country and to to heartbroken family members that a deal was done now today there is no deal that we know of for uh today only progress what do you make of the press conference when we're looking at the different elements of the horrible situation we're in it's as if we're looking for something clear concise i want to say structured as i was listening to owen and to the different criticisms jeff am i allowed for a moment to criticize the media at the end of the day there is an expectation of everybody that this part of this war is that you also come out and you talk and you discuss and everybody's talking about the hostage issue and not enough people are talking about all of the other elements of the war. And in that case, I have to say that I really do feel there's an expectation for me as a person, as a human being, as an Israeli, that we only talk about the hostages. But I'm sorry, I'm also the director of an institute that focuses on counterterrorism, and we are in a war against the worst kind of terrorism. So out comes the prime minister and says the word deal. It's a deal with a terror organization. Um, has anybody put up the idea that there was a deal when they were talking at 8 p.m., and then you get into the logistics at 9 or 10 p.m. and figure that, oh, it isn't as set as you think, not because of Israel but because of the other side. And this isn't to say that what happens in this case is good or bad. We need to talk to the public. We need to talk to the families of the hostages. We need to talk to Israelis. We need to talk to the international opinion. And Jeff, we also need to be very clear on what we're doing against Hamas terrorism and the implications of that. So to just cut it on and in and say, we made a huge mistake, as Owen said before, um, I am going to add in that the media are an additional aspect here. They've been hyping the whole hostage situation, and that just adds into it. And again, this isn't to blame anybody. That's how complex it is. Mary, would a truce, if it happens, if it's implemented, would it harm Israel's military objectives in your mind, in your, in your analysis? So what we're talking about, the words do matter, pause, truce, ceasefire in that sense. Um, Israel's military continues to exist. Israel's intelligence community does not stop. What we're talking about is a pause in the active fighting of the ground troops inside the Gaza Strip and of those different aerial attacks that are working hand in hand with intelligence and the ground troops. It obviously has an impact. We would prefer not to stop that, but we also have the hostage issue. Um, to me at the moment, the biggest challenge is that when you're looking at the pauses, it's that it's 10 people and an additional 10 people, and then another day, another 10 people, and none of us know who they are. And my heart goes out before to the woman who was talking, because she, as she said, nobody's told us anything. It's a terror organization. They haven't told us. So when the ground troops are on the ground and they're going to be looking in the Gaza Strip, both in the northern Gaza Strip, and we're already looking in the central and the south from the outside, but we're looking in, they're going to be looking at people coming out. Who are the people coming out? Um, are they just civilians who are trying to get to a safer place? Are they terrorists moving around trying to better their positions? Are the Hamas going to regroup? Because right now they are under pressure. That's why they're willing to do the deal. These are all going to be part of the calculations, but there is no easy way out. It isn't just pound them, as Pierre likes to use that word, pounding them, and then they'll give up the hostages. They haven't done that. So you have to continue. The only reason they're willing to negotiate with us is because we're pounding them. But hand in hand with that, it's going to be the negotiation. So that situation is soldiers on the ground looking at what's going to be vastly different activities for them than what they saw in the three weeks of the ground operation, staying safe, staying defensive, not hurting civilians, but not feeling that they're now sitting ducks for terrorists. Mary, I want to get your, your take there uh, from your from where you're sitting at Reichman University on, on Sinwar personally, because so much of this comes to his personal calculation, his personal calculus and acting rationally, that a, a multi-day pause in fighting, a multi-day break in exchange for hostages being released is, in his mind, a rational decision. Do you think Sinwar is 
going to be a rational actor here when it comes to signing well, on the on the agreement. So, so, Jeff, that's the whole aspect in all the negotiations with terror organizations, let alone with the terror leader, and in this case, Yechia Sinwar. See, Yechia Sinwar is more or less my age. Boy, talk about different trajectory of what we do in life. Um, I'll say the challenging thing for me, he has a rationale. That rationale includes the annihilation, destruction of the state of Israel. Now, what do I do with that? Because the actions that have been taken over the last six and a half, almost seven weeks, are part of his rationale. He thought that he was going to destroy the fabric of Israeli society, and he didn't. He thought that he could take these hostages and that Israel would not attack him because of the hostages. He was wrong. So at this stage along the way, the rationale for him is in survival mode, but it's his rationale of survival mode. He wants to be able to prove that Hamas is the way for the Palestinians to achieve the goal that he calls for, which is our annihilation. We're not letting him do it that way, but you have to understand that when you're negotiating, he has a different rationale. We still need to get the hostages back, Jeff, no matter what his rationale is, and that makes it very difficult. Mm. Mary, thank you so much for being with us this morning on I-24 News. Great to have you. Absolutely.